Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, my new best friend, Matt Beard, welcome to 100% Humboldt Podcast. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being ahead. (laughs) So we all want to know the Matt Beard story. Uh, Tell us uh, all about you. What's your job? What do you do? Where'd you come from? Matt Beard story. Um, Well, technically, I don't don't have a, I haven't had a job in a long time. Um, (laughs) The jobless Matt Beard. (laughs) I mean, I, you know, art's a job, right? It's a job. Absolutely. Self-employed job, but um, yeah, it's a funny, it's a funny, uh, funny reality just to have to wake up and go, what, what, what am I doing today? Right. Self-employed. Yeah. What's your boss want you to do today? Right. (laughs) <laughs> That's a scary question. So uh, how, how, where'd you come from? Where were you born and how'd you get here? Oh, I grew up, sorry, brush the mic. I grew up in um, Long Beach, Southern California, moved up here um, 18, uh, 1993 for Humboldt State. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't know a person, didn't even come up here for the weed, just wanted to get away from mm-hmm. um, Southern California. Long and, Beach uh, is pretty crowded. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a satellite photo uh about 20 years ago but i was working at the frame shop um and some brought a satellite photo and this was before we had like google earth and it was the entire southern california sprawl like la and orange county and you right. can see the the inland mountains this gray blob spreading of concrete mm. and you could see enough detail i could figure out where the house i grew up in was oh and that's funny Right in the middle, you had to go an hour in every direction to get away. And I, I never realized we were like, you, I thought, yeah, Long Beach, yeah, it's not bad. We're kind of near the beach. It's cool. But like, yeah, like, wow, we were really confined. Concrete jungle, yeah, literally. It, it was, um, yeah, intense. So coming up here was like summer camp year oh, round. Yeah. Awesome. Just I remember driving with my dad through Ukiah and then coming up into Willits and everything. Mm-hmm. I'm going, Mount, uh, I've never seen open mountains like this is great. I mean, San right. Diego had some mountains, but this is, yeah extraordinary yeah. so did you study art at humboldt yeah 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 started out oceanography me too um thinking thinking then i'll i'll have to work near the ocean and they convinced me that uh <laughs> you continue down this path you're going to end up on a boat in the middle of the ocean for six months a year and i'm like that's that's even further from the beach than an office job so <laughs> this is not working than long beach <laughs> yeah so um so i switched to art my folks didn't weren't really feeling that. I moved home for a semester and nice. Um, yeah, long story. Ended up coming back up. So the folks didn't like the the new art major. Yeah, they were. Like, yeah. What are you going to do with that? And I was like, Well, I'll pick up a minor in philosophy on the way. Yeah, and they're That's like, Well, useful. okay. <laughs> you know, I don't know. That's useful. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> my dad uh, used to grab me by my little beard when I was coming back to Oceanside from Humboldt. Yeah, because. What are those liberals teaching you up there? Those communists, and he oh, was just right. like hardcore. And I would go, I don't know. I I like I I like my classes, right? I, I'm a straight B student. I got this. So and you know now it's Cal Poly Humboldt. That it is. That seems to come a lot, Nick. You know, it's like every it, Humboldt State, Humboldt County, Cal Poly Humboldt. Because most people, I would say, mm. many imports like you and I, yeah, SoCal Bay Area, Humboldt State, yeah. Right. So did you meet your wife there too? She moved up here. I met her up here, but not at uh, not at Humboldt State. Mm-hmm. She was going to CR, um, and she was volunteering. Um, we have a convoluted story of how we met, but um, she was volunteering at the pregnancy care center. Okay, and um, I had just gone through a pretty wild. Um, um, well, uh, encounter with God that I, I couldn't explain, but it changed me. And wow. I jumped into trying to explain what had happened to me through the faith I grew up with. So mm-hmm. I jumped into going to church and doing the, the hmm. very, um, familiar, um, yeah. Christianity. And I, my, I was sincere in it. Um, um, and in that, through those connections, people I met at that mm-hmm. time, mm-hmm. Um, uh, I was doing a Bible study out on Samoa with uh, with a buddy who came to the house I was living at, and you know he was a farmer. Um, you know, there we had weed growing in the closet and all that, and I was sort of like, sort of 
making sense of the world here. And, and my roommate that was growing the weed, he was like, hey, you should meet my friend Steve. He's always talking to me about Jesus too. <laughs> and so we get hanging out. And so he's he, he's a character, um, really, really awesome guy. Um, we're still friends to this day. And uh, a friend of his that he went to school with was this lady who ran the pregnancy center. And she was like, I don't know. She was a little older and more mature and she was frustrated with me and him. Just like, you guys got to get your act together. And, Pull it together. Uh, yeah. And we were like, why? <laughs> we're doing, we're doing all the things. You weed guys. <laughs> we, we seemed like we were doing pretty good. Farmers. But um, no, I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't know if Steve was at the time doing that or not. I wasn't. I just, I lived around it and um, sure. had my, had my year of who, um, who didn't yeah. jumping in. But um yeah. So anyway, that was the connection. The the through this lady uh, coming over to mm -hmm. the pregnancy center and saw this gal volunteering. Nice. And I was like, hmm, could probably hang out with her. And I'll ask you about her later. It turned out we could. Yeah, and I don't want to throw names out, but I, I'm kind of curious. So you and I have a parallel journey. I was an ocean major from Southern California. Okay. Met Joni, who went to CR. Ah. Ah. And then tried to lens my God experience, which is re very real. I mean, mm -hmm. moved to some Christians who were like normal and they weren't sacrificing goats or doing weird stuff. <laughs> and I tried to lens it. And don't we do this? We lens this, whatever new revelation or knowledge or experience, we lens it through old wineskins, through old right. Right. ways of doing it. And mine was Adventist, seven-day Adventistism. So how does this fit into a Saturday Sabbath? It did, And it didn't really work. It was, right. a, it was shoving something into something to understand it. So, it, you know, suspending judgment and yeah. and to try to absorb new data and met Joni and we were just good friends yeah. for a long time, which was probably the right answer. Because <laughs> right. I was a goo goofy. I, okay. I, I know you can't believe it. I had really long hair. Ah. It was beautiful. It was blonde. <laughs> what beautiful happened? Beautiful blonde hair. What happened, Dad? <laughs> I go, the kids go, what happened uh, to you? I go, uh, used to be cool, huh? And I go, yeah. Oh, man. I go, you guys and drugs and time and age. Messed me up, man. My uh, my sixteen year old said the other day, he's like, I don't know, back in like, I don't think he said the year, but when I had an art space inside the surf shop in Arcadia, so I was like twenty fifteen. He's like, I don't know, back then, you used to be cool. Yep. Like, oh, ouch! <laughs> what even happened? <laughs> what happened to you, Dad? Uh, what? Who was the surf shop owner? He was a nice guy. Oh, which one? The one in Arcata. Where? The first one. The Oh, the Humboldt Surf Company back in the days. Yeah. They, well, he wasn't the original as far as I know. It's, there's been a Who's hum series, who was? Who was it, the Humboldt main? Surf Company was um, Kirk. Kirk, he was cool. Kirk and Diane, yeah. yeah. Like and um, That was your art. In he the... was a character, yeah. Yeah, he was a character. Yeah, you know, he used to, um, I was doing these like little illustrations on um, rice paper, and then you guys could have them, uh, you could put it in the under the glass. Right. of a surfboard. So they were like these little original pieces of art, you know, and I'd spend like an evening, I'd do one or two of them and I'd, mm -hmm. I'd take them down to the shop so he could put them in the counter for sale. Oh, right. And I, he'd buy them from me straight up. He'd pay 30 bucks for one. And I mm -hmm. thought he was selling them for 50 or 60. And they were his collection. <laughs> well, years later. So he, I mean, it was like kind of my little supplement side thing. He mm -hmm. would, he, he would just every couple of weeks, he'd buy a few more. Years later when he was moving, um, off the uh, the plaza and back into the, the little space. Mm -hmm. um, he called me in the back. He's like, hey, check it out. He pulled out a folder. And I was like, it's cool that he had them, but I thought that people were buying them. He had a portfolio. They weren't. He was just supporting me through those years. He was like- That's this. pretty cool. Yeah. It, 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 I That's had, pretty nice. I had some feels out of it. it a good, disappointing but, and cool. Yeah, right, right both like, at once. Hey, where, where is this? That's great. So- um, I was going to ask you, so you went to Humboldt, you created art, you be, so you came back and finished your degree? Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then, it was only a semester I was I was down. I took a semester okay. off. and Then married your sweetheart? Um, no, finished the degree up here. I met her in the middle of, um, actually towards the end even, mm -hmm. and then um, we both moved to SoCal. Mm -hmm. um, so I, okay, so yeah, I had a semester off of mm -hmm. Humboldt State, moved back home, came back up. Um, and then we met, I graduated, we moved down to Long Beach for another year. Gotcha. I just lowered the chair. That was really awkward. That's okay. Um, 
So, yeah, we, we married down there, mm-hmm. uh, lived like nine months, and then um, moved back up here as soon yeah. as we could. We got married we at Portsacol Wedding Chapel. I think I told you that, right? In San Pedro Harbor. Oh, Pedro. Okay. Remember the old little uh, f- seaport village there? I know it's down there. I, yeah. I, know of it. Yeah. yeah. Wedding's on the hour. You should check it out. All right. Uh, so, so real quick, I want to give a plug for you or allow you to. Well, people are watching or listening to this, they could go online and look. Is it beardart.com? Uh, that should get you there, but it's mattbeardart.com. Matt Beard. Yeah. B-E-A-R-D, like a beard? Yeah. Like the bigger one that you have that I have? Exactly, yeah. I changed, I, it used to be forever, it was Beard Art. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had a logo and everything, like Beard Art, you know? Mm-hmm. And my first studio space that I had was in Henderson Center. Um, mm-hmm. Well, my first public, like, so I had a shop, you know? Um, that was in Henderson Center between the barber and then there was a hair salon and then Esmeralda's. I was a little spot. I think oh, it's a jeweler now. Over in Grotto? But I put a sign. Yeah, Grotto. Yeah. So I put a sign up with the logo that just said Beard Art. Mm-hmm. And I was there, I think, two years. And uh, a good friend was like, after two years, she was like, oh, wait, this is you in here? I've been driving by forever. And I saw the sign beard art and I just thought it was someone doing like doing beard bre- braid and poodles into hipsters beards or something. And I was like, you know. No, that's in Portland. I should probably make it Matt Beard Art just to make it Just to make clear. sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a good distinction. Yeah. <laughs> so mattbeardart.com, you have yeah. a website. Yeah. You're on Facebook? Yes. Nice. Right, so we can yeah. find you on LinkedIn, Instagram? Uh, LinkedIn. TikTok? Is yeah. going to be... Probably. Facebook and Instagram. The, yeah. Seems like that's where everybody is. Um, so what do you like about what you do? Uh, what's, what are you proud of? And, and then I want to cycle into like the hmm. art community in Humboldt and go, yeah. kind of your thoughts on, um, you know, like, yeah. Um, just, you know, I graduated at 98 and just kind of made a commitment, nothing, nothing formal, but I just said, I don't, want to get roped into working full time, but I wasn't able to Mm. do art full time Mm. either. There's no way starting out that Mm. that was going to be feasible. So I just, I worked a bazillion different part-time jobs, you know, construction, Mm. stocking beer and dog food at the co-op and picture framing, um, just random. What was fun? What was fun in that, in any of that? Um, well, the co-op was fun when they had a ping pong table until we abused that privilege and then it became not so fun. It became gone. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Um, became the background. That was a good, beard art. That was a great time. That was, I, I, I enjoyed working there, but it was six in the morning. You had to be there every day and they, they wanted me there earlier. I don't know. I'm not a morning person. Was David Lippman your GM at the time? Cause he was probably later than you. That rings a bell. He's a good friend of ours that retired from the Arcata Co-op. Located, the, by the way, yeah, my shtick, it's really funny. Yeah. So polite laughs. Located right here in Arcata, California, the top of the bay, for you guys unversed in Humboldt yeah. uh, geography. And I'll tell the best joke that I ever tell, and maybe I'll save it. Did you hear the one about the cartographer that couldn't get a job because he had no sense of Yuma? All right. <laughs> That's pretty good. And you have to explain it. That's pretty good. Yuma no, is in Arizona. Yeah, yeah, it took a second. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like the map, though. I'm, I'm getting distracted. Ru- it's like, Yuma's not on that map. No, it's way over there. Yeah, that's, it's, that's it's, what was throwing me off there. It's out over like, there on Myrtle Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the co-op was fun until the ping pong went away. Until the ping pong was gone, yeah. Nice. It's not fun anymore. Until um, the ping pong was gone. There might be a song in there. I think it's a poem, at least. Um, yeah, and then... Oh yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, that was, um, that's interesting. So that was while working at the co-op, um, that was back like what, 2008, nine, um, and all the, um, all the grow shops, the, you know, the, um, hydroponic Mm -hmm. shops were really booming. That was like boom time for them. And, uh, yeah, guys that had the fertile world shop down, um, like B street, maybe B and fourth. I'm not sure where their address is, but um, they had me do a label for some like fertilizer product they had. Okay. And I drew the artwork for it and they printed it up because they'd been making fertilizers for their friends forever and, um, you know, but they just had no labels. They weren't, they were only doing it just for people they knew. They weren't mm-hmm. trying to make a commercial go of it. They had me do this label and, and uh, they had it on the shelf and some of the reps came in and 
were like, dude, what's this? We, we could sell this. And so they That's started great. a company and they, they wanted me to work for them. And I was like, well, um, <laughs> I got like a job at the co-op, you know, and they have like, it's part time and they've got health insurance and I, you know, I'm like, uh, and they're like, well, we'll, we'll pay you better. And, you know, I'm like, and they, they convinced me to do it. And I was thinking, this is maybe dumb because maybe I'm only going to work for like six months and I'll design some labels and then they'll be like, okay, we don't need you. See ya. Yeah. And that turned into about like seven years of wow. work. Same the business company. really took off. Yeah. We got to go to trade shows and wow. do all kinds of, um, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. They, I was like drawing bumblebees and being huh. like having a real job. They called me a marketing director. Wow. And, um, <laughs> and I didn't market one. They labeled you. One thing mm -hmm. for them because i didn't know about it. like it's it's pretty technical they 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 knew all the stuff i'd be like how am i supposed to market this you tell me what you how you tell me how to market. i'll just draw the pictures you know do the pictures and so i could do the pictures i figured out how to you know websites and catalogs and all the <laughs> um graphic stuff so it was nice. kind of a crash course and like a little bit more of a graphic so was background. this a time when graphics were taking off in terms of uh, adobe and Photoshop and things like that? Because it yeah. seems like that's a point where there was a, a spike in maybe Probably software. So. Yeah. I mean, my my nemesis was um, Illustrator. Okay. Because I could do all these graphics in Photoshop as an artist, like mm -hmm. making handmade stuff. Like, right. Like draw the the drawing and, and mm. ink the lines real clean and then scan them. And I could use Illustrator to clean up the lines. I gotcha. But man, trying to create work in that program when you're not a... Um, like the learning curve is nerd. I just couldn't get it. Yeah. And then, and it used to be no big deal. Like before you could bring any art to a t-shirt guy and they would do all the figuring it out. Yeah. And somewhere during those years, I started getting so frustrated because they, people would want you to do a t-shirt and the t-shirt printers would be like, well, it has to be vector. Oh, I'm like, well, dang it. Like, come on, man. 10 years ago, it didn't have to be vector. There was no vector. Now everything has to be vector. Come on. Like the old guys could figure this stuff out. Speaking but, uh, of t-shirt guys, yeah. I, I don't know if we mentioned this at lunch the other day. Do you know David Smith, the Grateful Dead t-shirt yeah, guy? Yeah. He's yeah, a good friend been, of ours. It's been a long time. Yeah. yeah he's still he's seventh day, wasn't he? Or he was in the old days. Could have been. I don't been. think. He when been. I met him back in, I mean, like, gosh, I would have been around like 2000 or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, did, I did a couple pieces for him oh, did, and okay. i don't think they really took off well they were yeah. probably he's all deadheads for jesus yeah. yeah they're all tie-dye everything's yeah. tie-dye yeah, yeah he goes all the dead yeah. things yeah. and uh yeah i don't think i think my shirts were probably weird they didn't really work but um but he was a nice dude i, I like fertilizer him. great t-shirts yeah. yeah i mean yeah i remember he was super into the grateful dead he's like check this one out this one like the gospel's in this you know yeah dead song and and yeah. uh hey. it's true it's i've got fun. a really good shirt from him from him it's a yeah. typewriter and anyway the design yeah here nor there. So tell us about the art community that you were raised up in here, how you've related to artists and, and Humboldt, if you have, and, um, you know, short of talking smack, which I don't think you, you could or would, but what, what, what's the environment here and where's it going? Um, it's a pretty fertile art community. Right? No, this place is cool for art. It really is. Um, it's, there's kind of, it's like, there's like the, the, the good things about Humboldt for art are also <clears throat> what makes it challenging. Oh, um, how so? Like there, the community is so strong. There's so much creativity and so much art mm -hmm. and so much love for art, so much support for art. Like it's, it's, um, art is really revered, but it's also really common. Ah, oh. so, um, and good art. Yeah. Yeah. Good, great art. You know, it's, um, great art. Yeah. So the challenge here to make a go of art and I kind of, this sort of gelled for me when I was working. One of the jobs I had for a while is working at the picture frame shop, Eureka Art and Frame. Yeah, right over here in Eureka, California. Yeah, yeah right. It said Humboldt. I, I see it right there, yeah. Um, which is where my gallery is, speaking of, if there's a plug right there. Your anybody. gallery's still there. Okay. It's still inside Eureka. Right around the corner from um, Brick and Fire Restaurant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My name is literally on the building. It's awkward. I've seen that. Yeah. And I yeah. figured you would base out of there and I yeah. could come and see you and hang. You, you, no, it's just a gallery. It's just a gallery. And okay. I put, I had to put my, like, I was like, wow, I feel funny, like having my name on a building. But like, there's no windows, there's no entrance. It's through the frame shop. I'm like, if I right. didn't put that there, people would right. probably just not even figure out. Did you ever out know the I'm founders, uh, Don and his wife? Are they still around the Eureka frame? Oh. They were downtown on E Street forever. Um, really nice. Paul, Paul, yeah, Paul thank and you. Linda. Yeah, they still own the building. Are they still around? 
uh, they come up sometimes. I haven't seen them for a long time. Super nice people. Yeah. Yeah. Real gentle. Yeah. So gentle. they were, I've worked for them for like probably five or six, seven years. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Small world. Mm-hmm. And brick and fire ain't too bad either. No, it's not. <laughs> it's pretty delicious. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I don't know where, what was I, uh, uh art in Humboldt where? County and your place. Oh yeah. So when I was working there, that's what I remember just realizing like, cause the really fun thing is an artist working at a frame shop like that is how many, um, artists would come in for getting ready for a show to have mm -hmm. stuff framed. And, you know, you'd, you'd, oh, right. you'd be framing a lot of like photos of people's poodles and stuff too. Like where's sure. like, okay, what do you, but like seeing the artists come in, that was always a highlight. Got yeah. to meet a lot of um, people that I'd looked up to for years and just getting to know people and started realizing, you know, like everybody that is making a go of art as a career, not just, um, not just a hobby. Right. Um, is either, well, like, they are doing something more than just local. Ah. They're all doing something out of the area. They have a bigger emphasis mm -hmm. of some bigger, something bigger than just doing shows around town. So I read. Um, yeah. And there's some that do shows around town, but, I, but, and they probably are doing pretty well, but like for the most part, you know, like not every artist is in a position where they have to make a livelihood from it because right. you know maybe maybe your spouse works and it's a hobby and you're not it's fun. you're not at it all the time right yeah, yeah it's just right. or it's an outlet it's just a creative it's sure. a on your off time but um but you know what i wanted to do was just i wanted to do art because mm -hmm. i didn't like to work mostly <laughs> <laughs> so it's I, a lot of candor so i was taking notes and going how do you do this right um and so what uh, what I took from that was like, oh no, you gotta, you gotta get out of the area. So when I would go visit family down south, I would take. Back in those days, I would take. And they, you know, it was cool. There was magazines in those days. There was surf media. Like there was like multiple, probably yeah. five different surf magazine publications in print that people liked. We used to get them all the time. Yeah. So I would go. I would take CDs, you know, of work and go try to meet the art editors. I'd hardly ever get past the front desk, but I'd just take them down there. And, mm -hmm sling sling stuff at them and it never really went anywhere at the surf magazines mm -hmm. at the headquarters mm -hmm. are they mostly la um orange county what like else? san clemente okay yeah 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 familiar and, uh, yeah they would um san clemente that's you know i would i would i it's would like surf and surfer it was funny it's like i'd hardly ever get past the receptionist like once in a while like i'd be catch them at the right time and someone would have me back and check out the word they'd be like oh, this is really cool and we they'd high five me and send yeah. me away but thanks like, for coming yeah they would be polite but they're like okay don't let him in again, you know? Yeah. Um, How did he get in? The <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then, I yeah, the one year, one year, everything clicked. And uh, gosh, it seems like I ended up getting some work and hmm. surfer surfing. It all culminated in um, the Surfer's Journal. I ended up um, landing a, a, a eight-page spread in the Surfer's Journal, which is like wow. the the... That's like the holy grail. It still is of uh, surf media. Is so that a monthly? It's monthly, based? yeah. And there's hardly any ads. It's huh. um, but yeah, it's really I've good articles. That. They always feature. They don't always, but almost every issue features a different artist. Mm -hmm. um, so they, it's just you know, it's not like just competitions and board shorts and stuff. It's mm -hmm. it's um, it's for more like, than that for people that actually read too. You know, and the so, culture of surf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that that was huge. So that launched mm -hmm. some things. So yeah, that that put it like not just local, that that kind of introduced huh. some things. And then that was even still kind of tough, like trying to make that go because I'm trying to figure out how to make a website on my own. I don't know. This was 2008 yeah. and that's still pretty hard to do. And Nobody did it's it. Not, <laughs> <for> 20 <bucks>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not 20 bucks. Yeah. And it's not, um. now it's almost pretty easy, but like oh, yeah. then it was like you had to figure things out. It was tough. Hmm. Um, And then once you have it, what are you going to do with it? Like- so there was, it did, it still was like sputtering along. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, what clicked was when, um, gosh, a couple of friends in San Diego wanted to go painting outdoors. Uh, okay. So I kind of like, at 2008, I got that article in the journal and I thought, you know, it'd be cool would be to paint the whole California coast. That's when I first kind of like thought, uh, I'm going to try to make a point of doing that. And I went for it and I, and I would paint like maybe eight or 10 paintings a year. So, and I realized city to bah. Yeah. But I realized eight or 10 paintings a year and we have like <laughs> 800 cool. miles of coast. This would be a lifetime. I'm not 
I won't have enough. I don't, this isn't going to work. Mm-hmm. And I, so I kind of got discouraged. And I would do commissions and just plug away at it. But it was like that, that goal seems out of reach. Mm-hmm. And then um, a couple guys in San Diego, Norm Daniels and Wade Konikowski, they, uh, I was down there and they were like, man, the weather's going to be super clear. Let's go paint La Jolla. Let's go mm-hmm. set up plain air. And I hadn't, I, I had a spell in uh, around 2000 when I got really into plain air painting and mm-hmm. for like a year or two, that's all I did was go out hike into the hills and explain plain air. It's easy uh, explanation. Well, yeah. When you, it's just uh, painting on location, like painting. Um, mm-hmm. Usually it's landscape work. It can be, it can be like still lifes and stuff, but mm-hmm. it's painting from life in the open air, um, gotcha. usually outdoors. Um, a lot of good plain air painters here. Oh, great. It's one. phenomenal yeah. community here. Yeah. There's some of the greatest in the world live here. We have like the Jim McVicker, Stock Schluter, those guys that are just, mm-hmm. they're these upper echelon dudes. And then, mm-hmm. you know, a whole community of great artists that. Yeah. One of our Humboldt heroes is, a, he's a vet. He's quite good. Okay. Yeah. Jim loves him. He's on online a lot. Yeah. I'll think of his name here in a second. Okay. Okay. The, um, so. At the oh, arch. oh, Ryan Jensen. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, hey, Ryan. Ryan. Uh, yeah, well, he's like cool guy. Yeah, he just jumped into art a couple years ago, and he's like going. He's I think he's like judging plain air competition. I don't know. He's yeah. he's and you know Steve. He just took off. Steve Taylor. Steve Taylor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, this stuff is really fun. Yeah, another guy that got into art late in life yeah. and just mm-hmm. hit the ground making fabulous paintings. Yeah, like pretty cool. I got into podcasting. Kind of depressing life. as an artist that's like tried. Yeah, all his life and then you're like wait you, you worked it two at years caltrans and then just started crushing these awesome yeah. pa- how did you you make it look easy now i feel bad yeah my friend I, will butler i make it look hard my friend will pick, <laughs> picked up yeah you make it look really hard <laughs> that's not good my friend will just picked up a guitar and just two years he's amazing yeah picked right? up the golf clubs he's just crushing it you know my theory is like they were they were working on that for a long time in other ways yeah. There yeah, there's a the a foundation for their creative life was being built for years. So there was yeah. a lot of energy building yeah. and ready to be released. They didn't just say, Well, you know, I think I might try That's this. Fair. Yeah, they're not just magically mm-hmm. gifted. I, I hope Well maybe not. there's that. <laughs> <laughs> Hate those guys. <laughs> My girls did uh, karate for years at McKinleyville, Joyful Healer Church, and then they okay. went over and they all became great ballerinas. Okay. Because the the crossover I could mechanics. see that, yeah. Like the uh, awareness of the oh. the balance and oh. movement. They didn't yeah. hurt anyone doing it yeah. <laughs> or themselves. They never get distracted mid yeah. mid ballerina and just do a just stay focused, just chop. Yeah, you know, it's easier than. Well, I don't know how <laughs> how easy any of it is. Okay, um, back to the shop real quick. Yeah. Um, do you ever meet uh, John Wessa? Yeah, yeah. So John would probably come in, yeah. and Michael Guerrero. He does a lot mm-hmm. of. What do they call their art? Is it lithograph? Uh, li- uh, serigraph. Serigraph, I believe. That's the yeah. layers. Yeah, like silk screen, mm-hmm. pretty much. Maybe you know our friend uh, Sarah Starr. Oh, that, sh- that rings a bell. Yeah. What does she do? She's uh, She does a lot of tile work, but she does some painting too. Okay. okay. Super good friends. Yeah, with I them. know the name. Yeah. Anyway, small community. So you, you came out, well, I want to say above, I, I don't mean that, in terms of you marketed out of the area and became yeah. a yeah. little bit more uh, famous, if you will. I mean- yeah. You had some notoriety. To, yeah. It was all that, like, in hindsight. So, okay. So, those guys dragged me out to go paint outdoors. Mm-hmm. All right. And I, back painting plain air. And that's when it clicked for me going, oh, wait, I have this thing I wanted to do. I wanted to paint the whole state because, you know, growing up in Southern California, family there, mm-hmm. like, like you know, you know this, you end up, especially when you're young, those college years, you're, you're going, you're driving up and down the state a couple times a year sometimes. All the time. Family yeah. stuff, you oh. know, holidays, things like... And I'm driving the length of the coast. I'm always, you know, mm-hmm. taking a different section, trying to highway one and exploring, looking for waves. And like, sure. just this whole state is so beautiful. I was like, I want to paint the whole thing, but I couldn't do it until it clicked. And I said, wow, those guys had me come out. And in like three hours, I went away with a painting that was huh. super awkward and weird, but I it, it made me remember this can actually be a lot of fun. Hmm. The paintings don't have to be masterpieces. They just mm-hmm. need to be a record of that place at that time. And, and yeah, that's capture. actually, once you let go of it yeah. being perfect, you go, this is actually really fun. This is Torrey Pines, Black Beach. Black yeah. Beach. Yeah. And so then I'm like, man, oh, I could do, I could do several of these in a day. I could it's go on enough. a trip yeah. and paint 30 paintings on one trip that right. would, would have taken me three years before. I can do that in a, a week. So you went for it. Yeah. 
So around 2015, I, I did a, a trip the whole state from one end to the other. I took three weeks, you know, sleep in that, a van. That fast? Just, yeah. And, um, but so I, you, sl you slept in a van down by the river? Yeah. <laughs> Government <laughs> did. So, there's a reference there for some of you. I have a painting of... Of uh, government Moon, cheese of Moonstone Beach, uh, uh, from it was a commission, uh, a couple that lives in a house up above Moonstone. They have this great view of the parking lot at Moonstone with a um, little river going out to sea, and I yeah. and cool view. So I painted the parking lot empty except for my my old yellow GMC Vandura, like I used to drive down there, right. and, and so I put my van on the parking lot and called the painting down by the river. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Just because of that reference. Yeah. Joni and I got baptized in that river uh, at 19. Okay. It was February. It was 40 degrees, maybe, and windy and rainy. We mm. had these big black, we had these big <laughs> black robes. We looked like <laughs> druids. <laughs> right? What kind of cult ceremony well, is you this? You know, it, it was a great <laughs> cult day that day. We got baptized. Uh, you know, no van down by the river, but yeah. um, it was amazing. It was, I was so glad to, to do that. We came up out of the water and... Uh, approached uh, a new, new new life. Awesome. Yeah, it was really good. So you went yeah. coast to coast. That's rad. I mean, border to border. Border to border. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Imperial Beach all the way up to Smith River or something. I don't think I made it to Imperial on that trip, but but uh, yeah, I've, I've gone and painted literally like, you know, you, you had, I had to park and walk to get to it, but the border fence. Yeah, yeah. Right, right down. And, yeah. you know. You want a river. It's a, it's a, that's a strange scene because you're there. It's so weird down there. And, on our side, it's like drab and gray and there's border patrol agents with, you know, gun racks and you're being watched and surveilled mm -hmm. and it's, you know, they're letting only two people at a time go over up to the fence and it's really locked down tight. And oh, really? Okay. And it's kind of like, huh. Then you look through the bars of the fence and there's like kites flying and cotton candy machines and Can't. they're having a party and you're like really? going, man. That's weird, huh? Did I maybe maybe I've made some wrong choices because it looks a lot more fun over there. I know they want to like I know I want to be in that country, <laughs> but it's like fun. It's 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 a little jarring standing there. Painting. Was the uh, was the bull ring still down there? Because back in the day, oh, uh, that was the um, that the, was the lineup uh, that people used to for I think surfing the the the, the slow the yeah. Tijuana slew. Yeah, right. right. That's a big, I don't know. big that's wave a whole, in the day. That's a whole. But there's world a bullfighting ring back mm -hmm. when I was a kid down there. They. Um, at, would think it's still there. I don't know that. Yeah, I don't yeah. know either. Imperial Beach pretty nondescript, though. I mean, it's got a pier. Yeah. Did you go to Coronado and do some of that? Uh, you know, I went to Coronado once to paint, and um, it was hot. Yeah. And it's just flat and sandy, and there's... How do you paint the Hotel Dell? Everybody's painted the it was, Hotel. Well, I, I thought it would be cool to paint a good painting of it, yeah. and I, I just couldn't find a place to be. Yeah. And I got annoyed, and I left. I just, I said, I'm not going back here. And then I've seen some great paintings of it, though. Oh, it's a, uh, oh, it's magical. Um, it's a cool old building to be in. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. I Did think you, I get greedy. I get greedy when I'm looking for a place to paint from because if I see it, if there's a cool building like that, I'm like, yeah, I want the building. Yeah, but I also want the slope of the beach, and I want to be able to see some waves, and I want the headland of like Point Loma in the distance, and yeah, and I want it all. Right, and if all I can get is the hotel. I'm like, no, it's not going to work. I got it. So what was the further south painting? Point Loma or Ocean Beach or? For the, on that trip? Yeah. PV, yeah. Mission I think, Beach. I think that trip might have ended in La Jolla. Okay. Just yeah. right there in La Jolla. Yeah. Um, La Jolla is cool. La Jolla. <laughs> La Jolla. Um, yeah. I ended up, I, yeah, I ended up in the ER that night. I don't know what happened. I think I, I, uh. Maybe three weeks in the road eating gas station food. I don't know what. Oh, was that it, the end but, of the line for you? But it was. Uh, huh. There was a fundraiser for um, Scripps Insti. No, not Scripps. Um, uh, through San Diego State, there's a um, cancer research, Morse Cancer Research Center. UCSD Cancer Morse yeah. Cancer Center. But they they do you know research and treatment um, cancer. This big fundraiser they do every year. Um, uh, the Longboard. Legends and Luau Invitational or something. So they get some like legendary, you know, servers from back in the day. And they do it at the beach, and, like yeah. La Jolla Shores mm -hmm. or whatever. La Jolla Shores. And companies will sponsor, you know, you pay and get it on a team and go cool. in this contest. And they raise a bunch of money, but they usually, every year they have a different artist 
uh, do artwork for them. And it's usually of scripts, some different view of scripts. Mm -hmm. And um, they auction them off and it's, um, I mean, they've, they've got a track record that those paintings go for a lot of money. They don't, they don't let you split it, which is kind of a bummer, but, um, mm -hmm. but it's sort of prestigious. The other artists that have done it in the past, I really look up to a bunch of them. It's like, this mm -hmm. is kind of cool company to be in. So, wow. so at the end of that trip, I was bringing a painting down that I'd done for it wow. and painted live um, at their VIP night. And it was super fun. But all of a sudden I'm like, I'm having this... <laughs> crazy. I feel like I'm being stabbed in the side of Where's my the stomach and I'm keeled over. Uh, no, I don't need the restroom. I just, oh, I'm, dying. I'm having a hard time breathing because yeah. I feel like I'm being, I thought I had a, oh, crap. Uh, something ruptured or something, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, one of the guys there, his wife was a nurse and she's like, she, yeah, she's like checking me out. She's like, well, I don't know. Like it's, we should get you to the, you know, so we went ER that night. And, the Scripps yeah, Hospital. Yeah. And, uh, and they checked, I was there for a couple hours and by the time that they, they were done, they just did a bunch of tests. They couldn't yeah. find anything. It was the tacos, like, man. <laughs> I've never felt anything like that. And yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, it was, uh, I probably didn't take care of dehydration. Maybe I Could wasn't all the one. Yeah. yeah. And then. Um, we used to spend a lot of time there. Black's Beach, the nude beach up the way, way there. And Black's is. The place where you, where nude people shouldn't go nude. Most people that choose to do that shouldn't. <laughs> Um, but the waves are amazing. Yeah, it's a good Just, spot. Yeah. Man, it's good. It's the only nature really down there because you have to yeah. hike down to the beach. Right. And, and uh, Joni and I were down um, and I was down at La Jolla Shores. There was a blind surfing contest. Oh, cool. Blind people. Yeah. And it was so cool. And they, That's these different. guys from around the, it was a world class people from around the world. Yeah. And it was That's like, different. they would get them, you know, into the ocean and then they would ride away. It was just a trip. Yeah. Right. Really fun. Right. And then learn to dive in the La Jolla, La Jolla Cove. Oh, that's got to be beautiful. It was that cool, is, man. It, the water down there is just, that's a pretty special place. Yeah. Depending on the time of the year. And um, maybe one of the only positive things I did in high school besides playing on the bong team. <laughs> Joni goes, you got a certified scuba? I go, yeah, I'm amazing. <laughs> so it wasn't all a loss. Uh, yeah. I love painting La Jolla. That's yeah, a, that's a it's, fun place. It's special. So rather than walk you all the way up to Smith River, <laughs> did you go to Rincon or mm -hmm. or steamer steamers mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all that? Mm -hmm. And probably some really remote stuff. Let, let's mention that. So Big Sur, I mean, out, out the coast, like something that we wouldn't know about that was, yeah. and I've, I've seen a lot of it, but some sp spots that were magic, amazing. Yeah. I mean, um, it's been fun. Like I, the, you know, once I have a map where I fill in dots, you know, like I uh, mm -hmm. literally on my site, you can, there's a Google map with mm -hmm. pins and you can see, click a pin and see the paintings of it. And mm -hmm. it's just lit up the whole state, but there's a couple gaps. Mm -hmm. um, one of the gaps uh, is probably my favorite gap because it's Vandenberg Air Force Base. Oh, right. And I was like, oh, I can't get out there. I don't know. Nobody goes out there. And um turns out a guy that's a firefighter out there saw that I was trying to paint the whole state. And he's like, hey, I see you don't have any pins in Vandenberg. We got to fix that. And huh. um, I'll get you out there. He got me out there. And I thought he'd have to be escorted by, I thought there was like security on these places, huh. you know, but turns out he just signed me in and they gave me a printout that said I could be there for the week, come and go. Sweet. Anytime, had full range. Huh. Um, found, um, we ended up finding this little, this little road on the south end that goes toward Halama. Hmm. With a, um, there was a gate locked with a combo and I won't divulge how, but, um, I acquired through combo. pretty, pretty surprisingly serendipitous means the combo was attained. And, uh, so yeah, so we had access to go like, I mean, me and a, a buddy of mine with our vans, a surf buddy of mine, driving our vans down the coast. Huh. Over the train tracks on this little dirt road to a campsite, like ten feet from the sand. Sweet, with nobody. Where in no one sight has gone before for miles. Well, someone else has camped there because the guy yeah. that that but we had. But hmm. just that's a rare bird right there. Being that is able rare. To do that, and um, so I have like fifteen paintings of Vandenberg that are not on my site because they're huh. all sitting half finished in my studio ah. while I'm trying to figure out how to uh, gracefully complete this midlife crisis of mine that has had me yeah. not working hardly at all. Let's, and, talk, let's uh, talk about that. 
Tell us about your midlife crisis. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's a midlife crisis. What are your top honest, three but, takeaways? But the your fact age? is, I'm 49, and so when I tell people, like, I go, oh, well, that sounds about right because you're 49, or you know, but um, um, <laughs> no, I because art, I was full full speed ahead, just doing this art thing. I had my head down, and hmm. or I wasn't seeing my wife. I wasn't seeing my kids, my family the way I should. I was just trying to work and I was just trying to get away really from a lot of what wasn't comfortable. And what wasn't comfortable is that marriage wasn't working mm -hmm. as it should. Um, I wasn't dealing with things as I needed to. And mm -hmm. um, my wife wanted counseling. And wow. so she said, she heard her thing when she said, um, she's like, I think we need counseling. And in the past, it had always kind of been like this threat. Like if you don't get your act together, you need counseling to I was like, I knew I was kind of a train wreck, but I thought she, yeah, you know, I thought she loved me anyway. And that's, right. like, it was this, I had you, this whole. You need counseling as I had this whole, comes with a lot. I, I had this great, like, it was like a cool country song, this romantic idea of like, I could be this sloppy wreck and she's still, she's this right. angel, but she loves me. And how cool is that? But for Isn't her. That poetic? She's over there just suffocating. And I'm like, I'm taking off. I'm going to go paint. I'm doing the stuff. And she's sucking it up. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. um. And I just wasn't seeing what was going on. So when she said, <laughs> we need counseling, she said, because I need to figure out how to live with you. Wow. It wasn't how to, she wasn't trying to change me. She Thank was you, yeah. trying to live with me. And I, that made, that made me kind of go, well, what's, so, what's, what is going on there? Yeah. And um, so I kind of did some self-reflection and I like, it's funny because I mentioned that, like that encounter <laughs> with God at 21 mm -hmm. and like we had just started the counseling. It wasn't really, we weren't deep in it, but um, uh, this one night we were reading, we were reading through Genesis where um, uh, Jacob, you know, Jacob has, he's the one with Jacob's ladder. The, the mm -hmm. uh, He has the vision of the angels of God ascending and descending on this ladder from heaven. Mm -hmm. and, sure. And um, that was his first uh, encounter with God. And later, way later after he goes through a bunch of stuff and, you know, Crazy stuff. Yeah, he has a wild life, but he way later in life, he goes back to that place and builds an altar there where he had that first encounter with God. And I thought, hmm. gosh, I haven't really, like when I when I was 21, had that encounter, I, I was stoned. It was my 21st birthday. We're sitting at a table out to eat at, um, live from New York Pizza in McKinleyville, which has burned down since then. But um, Delicious. Back yeah. in the day. Oh, yeah. And uh there was 12 of us there and I'm sitting there in the middle of the, well, 12 and me, and I'm sitting there in the middle of these guys. And the apostles. This is like the last <laughs> supper. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> and you know, I mean, when you're stoned, that's not a fun thought. That mm -hmm. was, that was heavy. So I went mm -hmm. home and, and I, I, I was like, I this, what is going on? And I was like, and Jesus, so I pulled down a Bible and I'm looking at it and it's just a, the last page of, uh, Revelation had been torn out, but it was put on the first page of the book of Matthew. And I'm just looking at my name huh. and going, Matthew. And it was like, huh. there was a presence in that name. Like it was like, wow. and I'm like, there's this, I don't have, I don't have words to explain this experience of this. But, sure. but the next day, every, like anxieties were gone. Okay. So what I did, cause I felt like this, this is kind of like crazy. And I th was thinking, no, this is maybe, this might not be okay. Mm -hmm. This might be that I'm losing my mind, and I might be one of those stories. At twenty one, people, people get super stoned and then they lose their mind and they think they're Jesus. And next thing you know, like they're walking around, like with it's a like, white oh, robe. did you hear what happened to so and so? He's down in La Jolla, and I'm going. This might be my here's what happened to so and so moment. Mm -hmm. And I went and sat in front of a mirror just to see if I looked as crazy as I felt. Huh. And I, I don't know how to say it, but it was just the the peace of God was there. It nice. was like this is okay. The person that I saw there, I was going, he's going to be okay. Sweet. Like this is, and, and I just didn't have, I didn't know what, where to put that. I didn't know where to put that. So when we read this thing of uh, Jacob going back to this place, um, cause I'd been pretty discouraged with, with, um, with the church, with my faith, with all of it. Cause it just seemed like, I don't know, just felt like going through emotions. Career too. Um, no career was the only thing I had. I was like, I was on fire with my career. I loved it. Marriage was kind of not. Yeah. yeah, marriage was Fired on the cylinders. No, it wasn't working. Huh. And so um, I just said, you know what? She has, she's saying she wants to figure out how to live with me. I yeah. don't know what, I don't know what's going on with me. And I think I kind of just had given up on like trying to be 
good enough for anybody. I was like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, but that story, he went back to that place and I thought, well, hmm. well I haven't been back to that place. I, I, ha I had that encounter hmm. and I immediately left that place and tried to explain that encounter over here in the church, like you said, like in an old wineskin, mm -hmm. I was trying to explain it. And rather than rest in it, rather than go back mm. to that place, rather, there, rather than say, okay, well, God, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, what is, where are, I, I said, okay, well, I'll figure it out over here. Mm -hmm. And it was a great place to hide from what was really scary, that direct mm. being available and being like in the presence of God as not, Mm -hmm. an idea, mm -hmm. but as the maker, the other, the one that's not us, the one that is with us, but isn't us, like that's a frightening thing. Mm -hmm. So I could hide over here in the church. Mm -hmm. And this was kind of a call to go, you know what? Like he went back to the place where he first encountered. So I said, I'll just, I don't got nothing to lose now. Did you geographically do that or metaphorically? Or? Uh, metaphorically in the sense Practice. of I, I waited for everybody to go to bed that night and mm -hmm. I went and sat in front of a mirror just like at 21. Wow, cool. And I sat there and it was um, like everything, hmm. everything just unpacked and it was like, I don't know, just, it was like, so God showed I don't up. know if you're, God like, showed up again. You know, people get weirded out by like Holy Spirit language, but it just felt like a flood. It just felt like like I have never felt so alive and I knew I love it. I knew that um that like it was gonna be all right, man. God was with me and he wasn't mm. he wasn't pouring down fire. He was like, I love you, man, and you haven't loved yourself. Mm. I've loved you and you wouldn't love yourself. Like wow. and I was like, Whoa, wait, like mm. I didn't expect this. That's, and that's for me right um, now. I love it. Yeah. So like everything mm. kinda shifted around and um so i knew you know amy and i we we we've been we've been working through a bunch of stuff and it's been awesome it's been the best midlife crisis i've ever had nice um i totally recommend it no ferraris <laughs> no like I, no got, jag. I, I got a lot of the lame behavior done out before the midlife crisis and sure. this one this one's been good it's been um yeah just feels like coming home. Well said. Um, I love it. I wonder, I, as you're speaking, I wonder how many people have um, encounters with the living God and then go, whoa, 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 whoa. And they deny it or they mm -hmm. do some LSD or smoke some weed or go pursue right. a, a thing or a pleasure and, and go, that, that that wasn't real. That, and it scares them or they, they're just uncomfortable and they want to deny this encounter I had at Burning Man or hmm, in the desert right. or at Moonstone or, you know, at home in bed. Right. And it's like, and it was God, it is God, still is God. And yet I want to kind of shy away from that because it doesn't fit into my framework of rational Western right. uh, uh, theology. And we almost, by trying to make God so big that, no, 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 we can't hear from him, mm -hmm. we almost make God too small hmm. because we're, we're, we're like trying mm -hmm. to say, uh, like, we're trying to like spell out who, but like, I don't know. Yeah. Like we are here. Mm -hmm. He is like, I am that I am like present. Like there's, it's just, just God is just such a beautiful presence. Like, yeah. It's, I don't know, we, we, we have a lot of ideas that minimize him by trying to maximize him, but they, I don't Correct. think they, I don't know. I would, there's so much more mystery than... I think we have uh, limited narrative and we right. exercise it all the time. I, one, one thing I've discovered is this notion of a, a Jesus walk, and that is go to Patrick's Point, Sue Meg Park, take a half day and go for a hike hmm. and just get quiet. Imagine, imagine getting off the device, folks. It's really weird. <laughs> uh, it was locked in the Subaru. <laughs> Came back, took a nap, had lunch, yeah. read the word. It was mm. it was amazing. Mm, that's awesome. And I, I cleared my head enough. It's a whole thing. Half day with Jesus. Right. Google it, and really heard, yeah, some interesting stuff. Right. And the first thing, and I think I shared this with you. The first thing I saw the first Jesus walk, within thirty seconds, I looked offshore at Patrick's Point, and there's a bald eagle. Mm -hmm. A cool. I mean, you never see bald eagles. No, no, that's, never. But hardly. Ever. Yeah, it's it's a special. I'm looking. Day. I'm going. Gosh, I wish. Where's my camera? Oh, shuts. It's in the car. Oh gosh. 
<laughs> Joni, I saw bald, e bald eagle. It's so cool. Did you so, get a photo? Yeah, no, in my head. <laughs> I, I still see. Can you see it? I see mm. it. Um, yeah, yeah I, I just think we fail. Yeah. We tend to fail at being spiritual. And I don't think it's that hard. You get quiet. Right. Let's start there. I like it. Turn off the devices. I like it. Shut this and and slow down and um, yeah. center in. And I think it scares the bejeebers out yeah. of most people. Yeah, just listen. Yeah, imagine that. And go do it quietly somewhere. Right. Hey, what's your legacy? What do you, what do you want to see happen? How are we going to remember you? What's on the tombstone? Is is there some artwork on your tombstone? <laughs> You're the one guy that could have some art, yeah. I guess. Well, I don't know. It reminds me like, you know, putting art on a surfboard. Right. I, I like I, I did sacrilege. that. Some of those little laminates that I did, I put. I had some artwork on some of my boards, and I go, "This is the worst." Really didn't like it. Like just even if I liked it, I'm like paddling out in the art, and I'm looking at this like abomination. This like this is <laughs> this is like thou shall have no graven image, and here it is. Like this yeah. is this. What can yeah. this do? Like I would love art, but like yeah, you know, you can kind of bring these visions into this place, but to try to bring like art about you know, this beautiful ocean and its movement into the ocean itself, it's just falls flat. And it was yeah, just counterintuitive. Kind of, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Tombstone should just be like concrete and moss. Mm -hmm. What are your favorite beaches locally, by the way? Um, oh, they're all my children. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So probably, probably camel is fun. Yeah. That whole area. On the right day. Yeah. Yeah, that's all is magical yeah. there. Yeah. I become jaded in my older years now. My, mm -hmm. Because, you know, in the 90s, you do, like even the, I remember, you know, it's like, hate. I hate the way this sounds, but just. Hit me. It is, you can't even park when it's good anymore. Right. You just, and that didn't used to be like that. Yeah. You know? Even up, especially up here, right? Yeah. 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 And um, hmm. I don't know, but. Yeah, I, you know, lately I, I, I just, I like, um, you know, small, small days, small ocean, terrible waves, but if I'm alone and it's easy, mm -hmm. I like Solitude. it easy. This is not a great place to like easy waves. No. So I don't know. I don't surf much these days. That's okay. Yeah. Um, Seems like Crescent City would be the, long, um, what's it called? Long Beach? The Crescent Beach. South Beach. Yeah. Yeah. That would yeah, have a lot fun. of small. That's fun. Yeah, we usually get out, we go up there every summer, get a couple of days in with the kids because mm -hmm. uh, it's where the kids like to get in the water. Yeah. And yeah, that's always fun. Did you ever know Rin Knoll, the surf shop, shop guy? Yeah. Um, or his dad? Um, I did artwork for them for their, the, the, they had a little longboard contest for years. Right. I, they stopped it. I think they might have done it again. I'm not, I don't recall. Maybe. I think he sold the shop. If but, I'm not but sure. yeah. Yeah, I got to do art for them. And did you ever meet Greg, the old man? I did. I met him in San Diego oh, at that's a surfboard funny. show, and uh, it was super awkward. Like I, I brought this this mural that I did for this um, the shaper down in Orange County, and um, they were doing the Sacred Craft, the uh, surfboard trade show, hmm. and I showed it to the guy Scott Bass that runs that. And he was like, dude, because it was like all about the, the act of creation of a surfboard. And I was like, dude, he has this show called Sacred Craft. And this hmm. this piece of art looks like it could be a poster for that show. So he's like, dude, that's rad. Just bring it down and I'll find a place for it. So I was like, cool. I've got an entry into this show. This will be fun. So he set me up like right outside the restrooms. Huh. I'm like, well, I don't care. It's a spot. I, I'm meeting people. and it, comes great. it was a super fun show. And Greg comes out and I was like. That's Greg Knoll. Yeah. And he's walking, because I was like facing the exit yeah. and I'm like, man, I just want to shake your hand. And he's like, oh, awkward. Oh, and he's already weird. It's anyway. like, and it's like the wet hand of, uh, it's like uh, he just washed his hand. Uh, I was like, is it? Maybe not. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm going with the, we're going to go did, with the one. But it was like, it was, so, like, yeah, so it's not for those that don't know, Greg Knoll was one of the first guys to conquer some big waves. Yeah. He's a pioneer. He's a legend. Pioneer, legend, a neat guy. And now I have friends in, uh, in Gasky that know him, he's a fisherman, kind of a, a loner, yeah. has a boat, and he just doesn't. He goes to shows, and I'm sure that's how he makes money. He gets paid to come and sign autographs yeah. and shake wet hands. <laughs> <laughs> it was awkward. That was like 2008. That was a ways back. But so as we go, I always ask two questions. Number, and I sometimes I, I hit Bethany with this right out of the gate. So I'll just wait on you. Number one, who are you? And number two, what do you want? 
You got time to think about it. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. kill a minute with my uh, reusable what was, bottle. What was the question when I when I came by for lunch and you're like, what are th what was what's your three words of advice? What top are the, three takeaways. Top three takeaways yeah. from like your entire life. Yeah. So and I was like, who asked these questions? You know, no one really knows this. So I'll just look at Nick and say, so in, in my office, Scott Hammond State Farm, downtown Eureka, which I never ever mention on the podcast. <laughs> are you plugging with your bottle? We, we have a lot of guests over the last 10 years, just rando friends, family, yeah. clients. And, and I don't hit, you know, strangers too hard with that, but, and we'll, we'll be gathered around for a stand up meeting. And so, Hey, how you doing, Matt? What's your top three takeaways in life? Go ahead. Tell us what they are. And you know, it's funny. A lot of people who are very shy will just kind of come in and nail it. Just like okay. sling, just okay. slay it. And other people that are just big mouths like me and blah, 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 blah people. Yeah. Um, uh, and they, it just throws them. They get, they kind of, well, um, can I pass? I got, no. <laughs> okay. I uh, love people, love God. And, uh, uh, you know, re reuse and recycle. I guess something, they'll throw out something. <laughs> right, right. So um, I don't remember your top three takeaways. I think they were good though. I think it was like, yeah, lo love people, love God. And okay, don't, don't dip your brush in your beer with yeah. your painting. Yeah, that was that. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, great. But it was. It, I mean, it was, you know, it was seeing people, like seeing people, being present. Like you cannot. That's my um. When you get down to what a relationship is between two people, mm -hmm. um, it can be. We can see people as others, or we can see people as, um, kind of. I don't want to say objects in the sense of like objectification, but like. Mm -hmm. Um, not as a mystery, but as a set of known quantities of what, mm -hmm. you know, like, here's what they represent. Here's mm -hmm. what, here's the pluses, minuses. Here's what I can gain and all right. this transactional The other side thing. of church, Jim Wilder says that transactional mm -hmm. brain versus connection and, yeah. and eye contact and yeah. the gaze. Relational Look. is allowing a person to be a mm -hmm. mystery where all you can yeah. do is say, I'd like to get to know you. Sure. And as soon as you say, I know you, you all, you only know these constructs that you have. Or that I've you let have you to, have. You have to let, yeah. yeah, you have to let the other be a mystery. And, and so I relate that with, with this, like coming back into um, the presence of God, just realizing like all my life, I called it a relationship, but it was a relationship built around an idea of a relationship ah. instead of letting God truly be other. Mm -hmm. A mystery that I'm, I can put myself here and say, I, here I am, mm -hmm. but who you are, it's not up to what I understand wow. and realizing once you kind of like step into that. And this is this, I mean, the, you know, we have like what Good Friday, or Easter week and all that, right? Like, mm -hmm. sure. That is the, I don't know if people get this, but like the whole gospel idea of going to step into the presence of God. We have this thing where we're like, that's a frightening thing. I always was mm -hmm. like, felt like I'm, I can't, I'm not. I'm not. Can't so do it. that's all the, you know, the cross, this whole thing. We have all this religiosity ideas of, about what it is. And we have scripture and there's so much written. There's so much about it, but it's, it's, it's okay. He's done. Mm -hmm. Like God did something to say that that door is open. Yeah. Like you don't have to be good, good enough. You don't got to straighten anything out. Your wife can say, I got to figure out how to live with you. You're a train wreck. And you say, what? I don't have to like figure this out first. Right. Just, just go yeah. and say, God, who are you and who am I? And what, what do we do? And that door is open and that, mm -hmm. so that was my takeaway is just going, gosh, when you just let the other be the other mm -hmm. and not all your ideas, right. then you can, you can know God and you can also know others. Like it, that's the template for every relationship. And if all your relationships are based on like, I've got them figured out and this, and my wife, this is what she can do for me. And this is mm -hmm. what everybody, well, your relationship with God's going to look like that too. And you're, wow. you're just going to have a relationship with a bunch of ideas. Right. But if you say, I don't know you, but I'd love to get to know you. That's when it can be a beautiful, everything opens up to a really beautiful place. So Super well said. That was my um, attempt when I stepped into your office. Yeah. And don't dip mm -hmm. your paintbrush in your beer.
Um, I'll share something with you and we'll go. Okay. On my Jesus walk uh, last time, I, I'm not a, I, I'm, I'm an okay writer. I have a book and mm-hmm. whatever, but mm-hmm. um, I got a poem that'll be a song and it's called A Good Heart Goes a Long Way. Mm. I think you got a great heart. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Scott. All right. Have a great Appreciate day. It. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, man.